Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about seven tips to help you in your kayak bass fishing tournaments or any kayak fishing tournament. Anyways, let's get on to number one. Okay, so number one and the most important, important, important rule for any kind of fishing, especially in a kayak, wear your PFD. It doesn't matter if you can swim or not, always wear your PFD. Don't just have it in your kayak. You know, it, it, having it just in your kayak, either in the back or like somewhere up front, isn't gonna help you if you unexpectedly take a dip into the water. I've harped on it so, so much. If you're in a kayak or a canoe or any kind of watercraft like that, make sure you're always, always, always wearing your PFD. Tip number two, find some way to secure your tournament ID to your board. For me, I just have this old, uh, it's actually a, an armband for a phone for like exercising and stuff but it works great for going over my catch board here. Um, there's a lot of things you can buy, like a tournament tag holders that just clip onto the board and make it really easy. And some of them can even hold multiple tags if you're fishing in more than one tournament at the same time. For me, I just have one tournament that I'm fishing in right now. So I can use the KBF identifier inside this little thing and I can just strap it to the board. And it's easy to move back and forth so that I don't have to always take such a wide picture um, I can just adjust it to the size of the fish that I'm catching. For me, it's probably going to be like that, just above the 13 inch mark. Part of that with your identifier is always make sure that you have extra identifiers on you all the time, ready to go. Because sometimes disaster happens and if you're not using something like this and you just have your identifier on the board, oh, the wind blows and poof, off goes your identifier. So then you always have an extra one with you. Further to that, don't just use paper. Find some way to laminate them. You can go to like the dollar store or Staples or something like that. Get some cheap self-sealing laminate paper. Or if you're fortunate enough to have a laminator at work or whatever, you have access to one, laminate them. That way you can just use your Sharpie right on it. And then when you're done with that tournament, then you can just use some hand sanitizer or bug spray and wipe that permanent marker right off. All right, number three is to do with your phone. Most kayak fishing tournaments, are usually catch photo release using an app like iAngler Tournament or Fishing Chaos or Tourney X or whatever app it is that you're using. Make sure you're not like me and you have some lanyard or you have some way to secure your phone to your body. That way if you drop your phone while you're trying to take a picture of a wily fish, it doesn't go in the lake because nothing will ruin a tournament day faster than dropping your phone in the lake. One, you just lost your phone. Two, now you have no way to submit pictures of those huge bass you're gonna catch, right? The next tip I'm gonna talk about is hotkeys for your phone. So for me, I have a Samsung Galaxy S21. Doesn't matter what model phone you have. Most phones have some sort of hotkey to very quickly bring up the camera app, right? I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah. So now you can see me, right? All I do is push the lock button twice and that opens up the camera app on my phone. Um, I don't know what model phone you have, but there has to be some kind of hotkey. And if there isn't, there's probably a way to set it. That way, when you have wet, slimy fingers, you're not trying to you know, use your thumbprint to unlock your phone or put in some password or do your little lock screen swipey thing. Um, you just push a button, you got your camera app from any screen that you're on, and you can just quickly snap your photo and you're done. The next tip is on the note of photos. So when you're doing these tournaments, like I said, you're using some kind of app, don't take the photo through the app unless it is required by the tournament. It's always better to take the picture with your regular phone camera and then upload it to the app later. And here's why. If you're just using your, your regular phone app to take your pictures, take more than one photo. It's a digital photo, it's nothing. It's not like you have to sort through uh, film or anything like that. Take a bunch of photos, pick the best one, delete the rest, and upload that one. By picking one photo that's the best one, the clearest, that shows the length of your fish the best, um, and has all the things in the photo that you need, and then deleting the rest, it makes sure that you don't accidentally submit the same fish twice. And it's just easier for you and it's easier for the judges. It's just good practice. So for the next tip, I actually need to go catch a fish. So here's hoping that I can do that. Stay tuned. Okay. So I got a little bass on here now. I don't really need to net it, but the point of the net is while boat flipping looks cool on YouTube, 
when you're tournament fishing, you don't want to risk snapping a line or losing a fish or something like that because you were trying to be cool. Especially when you got some money on the line. All right, so I'm gonna get this fish unhooked out of the net and then we're gonna move on to the next tip. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is while you're trying to sort yourself out, put your fish back in the net, put the net in the water, let the fish chill out and just hang out, okay? Because there's no reason to keep them out on the deck of your boat while you're trying to sort yourself out. It's just gonna put added stress on the fish and these fish are gonna be released. So, next tip. Okay, so like I said, we got my fish in the net, got my bump board here, got my tournament tag all ready to roll. Okay, so with your net, the other thing you wanna do is when you're ready to take your fish out, you wanna have your net and you wanna place it just at the end of your bump board, okay? So that acts as a safety net for your fish, a literal safety net. So while you're here holding your fish, trying to take your picture, Right? If that fish starts to flop out, he's gonna flop right into your net instead of back into the water. And you get to keep your fish and take your picture, submit it, and all that stuff. Okay, so let's get this guy out of the water. Let's get him on a bump board. I don't know if he's gonna be 12 inches. He is not. So this fish cannot be scored for me. But the other thing you wanna make sure of is while you're taking your picture, you wanna make sure that the mouth is closed, like that, right? Make sure your hand is not touching the tail area or this, any part of the head, right? You wanna make sure that you're not touching, especially you don't wanna put any fingers under the, underneath the gill plate. Another thing you don't wanna do is pinch the tail for extra length, okay? You want that tail to be natural. So then, while you're taking your picture, you got your fish on your bump board, you can slide this guy right down. Obviously, I'm not gonna submit this fish, but, cause I need to be 12 inches or more. Push my hotkey. I can line up my photo. Boom. And there it is. That one's pretty good. I only need to take one photo for this guy. All right. Well, then when you're done all that, you can drop your fish right back in the net or just release him if you're ready to release him that stuff done and then uh, you can set this poor guy free because they're probably pretty stressed out Whew. there and off he goes you guys wouldn't believe how long it took me to actually catch one bass today I'm, I would be embarrassed if I actually told you how long it took me every fish that I caught was a rock bass except for that little guy right there Black flies are just chewing up my toes. Oh my gosh, I have such a bad knot here right now. Because that's silly rock bass. Oh, is this even manageable? Can I untangle this? 